tries to go past it, running down the touchline. Referee pulls it back for the throw-in. You can hear the manager's not happy with that decision, Andy. Yeah, I think he got a wee push in the back there over the far side. But he's got dancing feet aiding this bit, you know. I'd, I'd just like to see the wee end product being a, lot better, a bit better tonight. He's a, he's a fine player and he's a good player to watch. Plenty of targets in that box for Aidan Nisbet to pick out. Aidan McAdam goes to the long ball over the top, but it's headed clear by Buchanan back into the Morton half. Omar's underneath it, can't control it out, it goes for the throw-in. Stephen Dobby, you have to marvel at the guy, don't you? Just looking at him down there, Andy. 37 years of age, all that experience, still willing, still able to go for it. Yeah, he's been a good player. He's been a good player throughout his whole career. And the fact that he played for quite a considerable length of time down south with big clubs like that, lets you see the quality that he's got, Jerry. Yeah. And when he came back up at first, I think so. Yeah, he's over 500 appearances and over 200 goals. I mean, it yeah. just speaks for itself. Played, of course, in playoff finals as well. Of course he did. That's right. Yeah. Throw and taken quickly. It's back to McPeak. He's looking for Omar on that side. Omar takes a touch, tries to keep it in, but yeah. out it goes. Morton working their way down the flanks. Rabin clearly been seen, been told to go forward here as Morton dropped to a back three. Yes, that. Well, we find that there's only one player to mark like that. It pushes it whatever side full back on a bit, you know, and he looks as if he's keen, he's keen to go down the side as well. But Morton in general have looked keen to go down the side. They missed out the middle, they missed out the through ball through the middle because they're two big fellas at the back for Queen of the South. So they need to have a fair bit of joy in the air if they're going to get anything out of the two guys. So I think down the sides is going to be the, their best way towards goal this tonight. And it goes for the throw-in. Well, it's just an referee took a fair bit of time making his mind up on that one, Andy, before he decided. <laughs> I think he was unsure, Jerry. He waited on the linesman. The linesman took his time waiting on the referee, so we went away and had a cup of tea and come back by the time they made the decision. Ferguson up towards the halfway line. McAllister gets the header off. Obelize underneath it. He volleys it high up into the green air. McGinty's back there, goes to get the header onto it, knocks it to Omar. He swiftly volleys it. Nisbet takes it down the thigh, plays it into Orsi. Orsi, plenty of strength on the ball, nice touch. Ah. Oh, blatant, absolutely blatant from Gregory Buchanan. Yeah, that will be the first yellow of the evening, and no wonder. Nice feet there from Calvin Orsi, though. Yeah, he did well. He did well with controlling the thigh, first of all, to get them turned as well, and showed a bit of pace to go away. And that was blatant. He pulled the jersey back. It's a blatant yellow card as well. He always puts the, the defenders under a bit of pressure like that early on in the game when the card comes out as early, Jerry, but Orsi did very well there. Aiden Nisbet with the free kick. Approximately 20 25 yards inside the Queen's half on that far side. Amar offers himself short, but I'd imagine with all the big men in the box, Aiden will be looking to launch this one. All the players strung out across the 18 yard line. Nisbet fires it high, and that's going to go out. And it goes for yet another goal kick. Plenty of options in the box there, Andy. There was, and they chose to go down the side with the ball, which is. A hard ball to play when it's that, especially when the ground's a little bit greasy as well. The ball just picked up pace off the ground there, which didn't help. But I think the manager was a wee bit upset he didn't put it in the box. He had gambled by putting the big boys up there like that for the first time together. And I think he was really looking for the ball inside the box. So. 16 minutes gone here at Capital Park. It remains Green at Morton nil, Queen of the South nil. Challenging coming in. That far side. Just given as good as he got, I thought they'd come. Yeah, he's, he's got to be a wee bit more cute than that, you know. He's just basically knocked into him altogether. He's got to wait till the ball's closer to him as well to make contact so that the referee doesn't think you're doing it deliberately. Mar gets the header in. McKeever now chases it down, takes it onto his head, heading down the touchline. He's got past one man. He's looking to get the ball into the box. Switches across, Obelize there, plays it out. There's Keeper. good switch amongst the players going down the side, Jerry. You know, it's not as if it's the same people. They've switched over a couple of times like that. McKeever and McPake down the right-hand side and, and, and Aidan Nesbitt, Calvin Orsi and Lewis Strap getting up to support as well. So, you know, they're, they're backing each other up down the sides as well. No leaving it to one or two. Once again, Lewis Strap will launch this one into the box. There it goes. 
Very good clear once again, but only as far as Miz, but he tries to play it back to Strap. Strap in that unusual right back position for him. He tries to play it across. There's a chance of a header inside the box, and then it goes. It's the first goal of the evening. Wonderful ball in. I'm trying to see who it is. I think it's Captain Jim McAllister. Yeah, what a ball in from Omar there. It was fantastic. But patience again to get the ball in for the, the size, Jerry, and that's the first time. When the ball's been played in with a bit of quality, he beat both centre halves and it was a fine header. He's just directed it down into the corner like that. He did very well, the big fella, you know. Well, Captain Courageous Jim McAllister once again finds himself in the box. He picked out a few last season. Yeah, I, I remember a couple he did, you know. Going down the going down the side and getting the ball in the box like that's going to be the only way they're going to turn those two at the back. Like, they're big, big fellas like that, and the ball coming in off the side. Of course, I'm giving it to the captain. It's Sean, Sean McGinty. McGinty. It's always the curse of the commentator, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, Sean, Sean comes in. It's a nice deft header as well, isn't it? Yeah, it was a centre forward header rather than a central defender. He just glided the ball into the far corner, didn't give the goalkeeper a chance like that. And it's been coming, Andy. 18 minutes played here. Morton won. Queen of the South Nil and deservedly so. Yeah, well, they've had, they've had the bulk of the ball. Uh, and then they've used it. They've used it well. The quality, as I said before at the end, might have been a wee bit better. But they've kept at it, and they've kept going at it, and uh, they feel deserve to be 1-0 up, I've no doubt about that. Queens have done nothing as an attacking side, but you'll probably see that now when going down a goal like that, they'll have a wee bit of flurry, and it's for Morton to do what they do, and uh, get the next five minutes in the game still holding the league. Dropped inside, nightly inside the box, and the challenge comes in as it goes for the goal kick. I have to say, it would appear that the boy Maxwell is the danger man coming down that left-hand side, Andy. Yeah, he likes to cut in on his right side as well, Jerry. That's that's going to be the option to it. Uh, look in and either play off the front player or get a shot away. Uh, he, looks a, he looks a dangerous player as well. They look a relatively young side as well, a bit like Morton. Uh, the one or two bits of experience as we spoke about earlier on, but uh, they look a young side trying to find their way in this game. But certainly Morton, the first 20 minutes of this game, have been well on top, Jerry. no doubt about that. Sean McGinty, of course, the last man to score here at Capital. Andy scored in that Arbroath game seven long months ago. As Nisbet tries to get underneath it once again. Queen struggling to get on the ball and make anything happen. The tackles flying in from Morton as well. There's a tenacious side to this Morton side. Yeah, they're busy in the middle of the park like that. That wee triangle that's playing in there with McAllister, Jacobs and, and McPake coming in to make that wee triangle up is uh, putting Queen of the South under pressure quite a bit when they... They've got the ball in there. Nicely taken down, try to play it across. Strap knocks it out, gets the block in. All the blue and white shirts going back to defend this one. It's almost like a corner out on that side, isn't it, Andy, when you get a throw in so close to the flag? Yeah, yeah. They're going to launch it in, do a similar to Morton have done in the last 20 minutes of the game by throwing it in off the side like that. You know, the second ball is very important off this, Jerry. You know, if the first header's not been won and directed outside the box, you've got to be aware of the second. Reese McKay, but will be with the throw in. Into the box, Nisbet of all people, one of the smallest people on the park, and he manages to get the header away, but it's all the way back now to the halfway line. Fired back into the Morton back line. Omar gets a strong header, heads it down towards the halfway line. Maxwell once again picks it up for Queens, though, tries to get away from McKeever. Does the 360. Steps inside, now picked up Morton on the attack once again. Josh McPay on his own down here. Heading, he's got two men around him, he's heading towards the edge of the box. Nice control from McPay, he's still inside, still holding on to the ball. But the challenge comes in, headed back. Pake just can't take it down. Every time he gets on the ball, he just looks to attack. Well, that was off the halfway line there, sent forward by Omar. Uh, McPay made his run, they took them right back into the 18-yard line. A little bit unfortunately, and the ball got tied up in between his feet like that and he wasn't able to get himself sorted out but it's positive Jerry. I know I keep going back to that it's positive when you're going forward making situations like that you know you'll get more form than four, five, six passes in the middle of the park to get there played forward and in the box as quick as you can McLean goes in for the challenge referee doesn't like that challenge either yeah he's got to be a wee bit more patient than that Brian McLean you know it's a it's a mid-park header like that, it's going nowhere, and he makes a decision for the referee by pushing in the back. Joe McKee is with the free kick, just inside the Morton half. Played back to McKee. Omar leaves it for McLean. Jacobs tries the short ball to Omar. Referee will give a free kick for that. I think it was the short ball from Jacobs that caused all the problems for Rabin Omar. Yeah, he's been played in. Brian McLean played him in like that and rather than take, it, take care of the ball for a wee while he tried to play a first time pass 30 yards from his own goal without knowing what's going on behind him allows the player to go forward it could have been it could have been a dangerous situation like that 
you've got to keep the ball or keep the ball moving forward. This a dangerous situation for Morton. Really, the first yep. real chance that Queens have had. But Morton now have to defend. And it's Joe McKee. Looks like he's going to try a shot from this distance. It's about 30 yards, I would say. Chips it towards the far area, and that ball is going all the way out. Aidan McAdam watched it go. McKee not happy with himself. You played with Joe McKee's father, you told me. Oh, many years ago. Makes me feel like an old man. We were both at Celtic together many, many years ago. Uh, I remember Joe when he was a very, very young boy. His dad travelling around about watching him play. And he played, of course, he played a few seasons down here at Capelo for Morton as well, Joe McKee. Uh, and I think he started, young Joe started his career at Dundee United. But yeah, I did play with Joey's dad for a long time. Smashing fella. Chance now for Morton to mount their own attack from a free kick. Obelai going in heavily on Josh McPake there. The Tone forward didn't like the attention. But Nisbet will now to look to put this towards the penalty spot, do you think? Yeah, we'll be, for the back post. Between six yard line and penalty spot is the ball, Jerry, there's no doubt about that. And allow the big fellas to get across. Aiden lines it up, gets the header back down just yeah. past the post. That really was an opportunity. And once again, Morton creating, but the referee calling for offside. Yeah, I couldn't tell from where we were here whether offside or not, but it's a good ball played in. Maybe a couple of yards further in might have made the header for Brian McLean a bit easier, but yeah, it was a good ball and good effort. You know, offside must have been centre of goals, and I couldn't see who it was, Jerry. Rohan Ferguson will take the resultant free kick. Lamar goes in once again. Beefy challenge from Rabin. Picked up on this near side. Shields plays it back to Maxwell. He drops it back inside. McKee takes up the play. Plays it back to Buchanan. Back to McKee just inside the centre circle, just inside the Morton half. McCabe plays it down towards Shields. Looking to advance on the run. Jacobs pushes him out, will be live, picks it up. Queen's patient here in their build-up, looking for that fast release ball. It's chipped over the top, and that's just one that Stephen Dobby could not take in his stride. And that is a guy you do not want to be in the box getting onto a ball like that, Andy. Yeah, that's it. They played well. They're 10, 12 passes to get the move set up. Played the ball through. They like Brian McLean to be a wee bit closer to Dobby when the ball's played forward like that. And uh, fortunately enough for Morton, uh, he didn't get a touch on the ball, and the Grease in the park took the ball beyond for a goal kick, but, you know, now we begin to put one or two passes together, Queen of the South, and they look as if they could be dangerous that way, especially with Dobie up front like that. 25 minutes played here at Capelo Park, the good news is it's Morton 1, Queen of the South 0. That goal coming from Sean McGinty, nice deft header inside the box, leaving the goalkeeper no chance. we take a bit more of that, Andy. Yeah, yeah, well, get the ball in the box, Jerry, that's what it's all about. Just a pity the Home fans are here to see that tonight, you know. There's been plenty of good play by Morton early on like that, and also as well getting the ball in the box, which is great. Supporters love that. Obelai pumps the ball forward. I wonder, is it an advantage, Andy, that Obelai was training with Morton for a couple of weeks so they know how some of these boys line up and play? Well, they will. I think he spent a couple of weeks down here a month ago training and doing whatever. And yeah, well, he'll, he'll know their faces, whether he knows how they play or not, because he was basically training without games at that time, so... But he is, you know. I've got a wardrobe at home that's about the size of that. <laughs> Jerry, he's a big, big fella. I don't like to run into him too often. Nisbet picks it up. Plays it back inside. Omar screaming for it. It's going to be a first-time delivery from Omar. He fires it across. It comes off. The Queen's defender safely into Ferguson, who immediately turns defence into attack. Rolls the ball out forward. And now picked up by Shields. Advancing into the Morton half. Jacobs comes in for the tackle. Superb work, they're tracking back all the way. Josh McPake to get the tackle in, McKeever's underneath it, so is Obelai, he wins the duel. McPake, and again. Omar commits the foul. Connor Shields wins the free kick. Josh McPake's energy, just something to admire, Andy. Yeah, it was good, and determination to get back to help out like that, you know. He caught a little bit up the part there with the move breaking down and being pitched from the goalkeeper so quickly meant that there was a bit of space down there the left-hand side here for Queen of the South, and they filled it with one or two players. McPake made a 50, 60 yard dash to get back there to help the defenders clear that and tidy that up. That's, that's a good commitment. Loose now from Queen's, that ball going out for a throw-in, halfway inside the Queen's half, and 
Rabin Omar looking to take it. Only McLean and McGinty stay back at this point. Jacobs once again wants it short. Nisbet sprints across the pitch as Omar looks to play the ball to him. Nope, he opts to get down the line. Akiva tries to head it on. Bit of confusion at the back there. And Morton win the first corner of the match with 20 minutes played here. It's Morton 1, Queen of the South nil. Yeah, McKeever did well there. He got a slight touch on the ball, keep it moving towards the goal, which gave the Queen's defence a problem like that. Uh, just Orsi couldn't get across in front of the defender, but made an opportunity for himself here. Omar picks up the one from Nisbet. That's a good ball into the back post. It's headed back across. Obelai's there trying to clear. Bit of what we used to call a stramash at the back post there, Andy. Wonderful. Straight off the training ground. Yeah, it's a nice ball. Played to the back post like that, you know. Brian McLean did really well to cushion the header down, you know. Calvin Orsi couldn't adjust himself quick enough to get back onto the ball. Ended up with quite a feeble finish at the end of it. But yeah, it was well worked again from, from the corner kick. Certainly becoming a more open game since that Morton goal. Here's an opportunity. Not back inside, but McLean calls upon his goalkeeper. Plenty of experience there from Brian McLean. McAdams once again pumps it high into there. That's picked up though by Queen's Obelai. Plays it down to Maxwell, comes across the halfway line. McKeever goes to challenge him. Back inside to Shield. Shield steps away from Omar, looking to go onto his right foot, looking to fire a shot away, is he? Tries to play it, Nisbet can't get there. Not back inside, McKee keeps the ball from Nisbet, plays it back, gets it back, McKee, plenty of space now if he wants to try the right footer. Dobby tries to play the one two. Stephen Dobby once again goes through Omar's legs, still retains possession, plays it out to Shields. Everybody back depending for the tone at this particular point. Yeah, every, everybody's back behind the ball, you know, they've just got to be careful of that, especially when Stephen Dobby's on the ball, his quick feet. Great touch for the game. You don't want him to be skirting across your 18-yard box with the ball at his feet like that. Trying to entice players to make a challenge because that could be a very dangerous situation. Obelai comes well into the Morton half. That's a slack, slack pass. And out he goes. We've reached the half-hour mark here at Capolo Park. Delighted to tell you in this Betfred Cup tie. It's Morton 1, Queen of the South 0 as we see the first substitution of the evening. And it'll be Aidan Fitzpatrick coming on for Daniel Pybus. What do you think the situation is there, Andy? He's obviously picked up a wee injury of some sort. Maybe picked up a wee strain that they don't want to take too many chances with, you know. Uh, I think he's got a stomach complaint, is he? It was coming off the part there, he made that gesture, you know, as if there's something like that. So It's one of them that he's got to get done. He can't wait till half time like that. You know, he's got to get it done right now. Fitzpatrick, one of those players that come in. With a whole train load of players that come in the south. Brought in over the close seasons, McAdam fires it high into the Queen's half. It's headed back, straps underneath it, knocks it down. Looking for Nisbet, it's picked up on the loose ball though. Ewan Yeast has it, dropped inside Dobby, leading the line even increasingly now. It's down that far side and there's the pumped ball out for a throw in. Queen's definitely coming back into it here, Andy. Yeah, last 10 minutes have been like that. They're getting hold of the ball now and picking their passes trying to get out down the sides as well to get the ball into the box but you know Morton have got to get tighter in the middle of the park like that it's been quite slack there a couple of times when the ball has come in through the middle of the park and they really don't have much to hit up front from behind the three in midfield like that so Orsi needs to stay a little bit further up the park and Morton need to be a bit more careful when they've got the ball that might counteract Queen of the South eh, on the ball abilities Ball thrown into the box, Obelai's underneath, it's taken down, there's a chance breaking inside the box, McAdam does well to pull across but it's taken away and picked up in this near side once again, all the Queen's players staying up. That was a stramash in the box, Jerry, without a shadow of a doubt. There must have been four or five players all competing for the ball there, two yards from the goal, so uh, the goalkeeper got caught up in, in the bodies as well, which made it difficult. Yeah, there's a bit of let off there for Morton. Throwing on this near side, once again, McCabe dries the ball off, throwing as many yellow jerseys into the box as they can, as David Hopkins down below us shouts his orders to his team. It's inside the box, trying to get it clear, Obelai leaves it. Breaks on the edge of the box, Obelai tries to turn away, referee looking toward a free kick, and that's in a really dangerous situation, just close to the D on this left-hand side as we look down to it. Yeah, it's the old second ball routine again. 
It's not won by the, the Queen of the South attacker, and when it's fell down, Morton have really got to get there, get the ball cleared out on the second. But it's given away a, a free kick, you know, it's what, 22 yards out, centre goal, right in the danger of this area. You know, the first kick clearance would have been ideal to get up the part there, but Jimmy McAllister got caught up with the ball there, and he had to commit the foul at the back here. Stephen Dobby, I think, fancies it. Dangerous or, man. Or is it Rhys McCabe? Referee pushes the Morton wall back. Even McAdams stands on his goal line. Could be Dobby on a right foot, or could be McCabe with the left foot. Yeah, it'll be Dobby. Jerry. You're right, Andy. Stephen Dobby takes it. Oh. And that, we could kindly see, is maybe not vintage Dobby. No, no, no. And we gave it the old commentator's curse as well there when we when we gave it a build up like that, that would probably be the worst he's hit for a long, long time like that. Almost 20 yards the other side of the goal. But he's a dangerous man, you know. I'm, I'm being flippant with that one, Jerry, and I don't like to do it with so much of the game on the go at this moment in time. Yep, and particularly with such an experienced talent as Stephen Dobby. As Obelai gives it back down. It's a game ahead tennis in the middle of the pitch there. Jacobs goes up for the challenge. Taken up once again by McPake, he gives it to Nisbet, nice dancing feet as you see Andy from Aidan Nisbet, now a turn of pace as well as he starts to attack that defence on that far side, needs a bit of support though, Jinx away, tries to come between two defenders, the ball breaks now and Dobby has it, plays it back to the defensive line, it's fired over, McGinty gets underneath it, gets the header up towards the halfway line, opts for the powerful clearance this time, Orsi trying to get ahead header onto it again all the way back to the goalkeeper and you can see just pressurising the goalkeeper make him play the ball early Yeah, Orsi made his way up there to, to try and put him under pressure like that you've got to do that, you've got to do it you can't allow him to take a touch on the ball and be able to do what he wants after that put him under pressure to uh, kick early Dunhamers have another free kick just outside the centre circle on the right hand side Bruce McCabe standing over it Plenty of big men get into that Morton box. He drops it in short though. That's from McKee to try and chip it to the far side. And the block comes in. Switch back out to Maxwell here. He goes to take on McKeever. Gets the cross ball in. And Aidan McAdam safely under that. Clutch it into his chest and immediately throws the ball out for Orsi inside the Morton half. He looks to drop it in. That's a nice pass. Just inside. McPake picks it up. Heading towards the edge of the box, looking to go into his right foot. Challenge comes in, he's still got it, he's still got it, and he fires the ball just over the bar. What a fantastic run and finishing shot that was, Andy. Yeah, James McCake, McCake did very well there, but it was a great early pitch from the goalkeeper there that got them away, and McPake picked it up 10, 15 yards inside the half like that. Travelled all the way to the 18-yard line, ducking and diving to see off defenders. And he got a shot there, he was unlucky. Yeah, he was unlucky with the fact that he just couldn't keep it on target. But that's good play, promising play from the boy. He's a very, very confident boy, I think. Ten minutes left to play in this first half of the Betfred Cup tie. It's Morton still leading. Well, that's Sean McGinty goal to nil. As Obelai plays it up. Again, it's headed down, chased into that corner by Ewan East, but the thumped clearance. Orsi underneath it once again, using his strength, trying to get away from the defender. McPake waits for it. Obelai, nice touch from the big man. McLean loses out in the challenge, but that one should be picked up by Omar, who gives it back to McAdams. He fires it off the forward. That was one for a bit of a heart attack, Andy, was it not? Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier with the Queen of the South goalkeeper. You know, you, you've got to be able to, to kick to the side. If you kick in, it could go anywhere after that, Jerry, and that's what happened there to, to, to the goalkeeper. He's got to be very careful with that. Ewan East was the Dunhamer trying to get in on the act. As Omar looks to take another throw in down this near side, and Nisbet, of course, sprints across looking for it. It's dropped into the feet of McPake, plenty of energy from McPake, plenty of skill as well as he gets the throw in to Morton, halfway inside, Queen of the South half. Plenty of options once again, Nisbet offers himself short. McPake. Takes a touch, loses out. This time, Queen's try to come forward. Nice interplay and the chipped ball down the channel. That's one to be chased. Challenge comes in, though. Out it goes. Fitzpatrick, the substitute there. Yep. Trying to get into the game, maybe just lacking that wee bit of match pace at this time, Andy. Well, he was. He was a wee bit slower in getting up to support the game there, but that was good play from Queen of the South. He broke from 
far in their own half there and ended up on Morton's 18 yard box like that with some good interchanging and passing. They've had the best of the last 10, 15 minutes, Jerry, there's no doubt about that. They're looking dangerous. As they go to take their first corner of the match. This one should be launched into the area. Near the penalty spot. As it is, and the header comes out, clears the line. As Patrick tries to head it back inside the box, McLean gets up, gets the header away. McAllister, nice take by Orson, he's looking to set somebody free. Plays it down, it's Jim McAllister that has to chase it all the way down the line. He loses out this time to Fitzpatrick. Back to Fitzpatrick. Playing underneath it, but he loses out on the challenge to East. He's down at the corner flag. Drop back inside for Stephen Dobby. Rabino Marr gets the challenge in. Out it goes for the throw in to Morton. Yeah, again, they worked it from the wrong end of the park up. They've been playing the last 10, 15 minutes in the counter attack, but they look dangerous in the counter attack like that. There's something Morton's midfield players that 10, 15 yards further up the park and playing beyond them now, and they're getting behind it. As I said there, Jerry, I think they're looking, that's the most dangerous they've looked throughout the game. Nisbet trying to take it down, but breaks now. McKeever drops it nicely into Nisbet. Nisbet tries the first time shot on the run. Super pass just inside from Ross McKeever there. And Aidan Nisbet, one thought in his mind, and just unlucky that it went past the post. Yeah, he worked the old nutmeg pass there to play him inside the box. Yeah, that's a few times Aidan's been in like that. It'd be nice to see him take a wee touch inside the box like that, show a wee bit more composure. He certainly got that. He uses it outside the box, but for some reason or another, he seems a wee bit slow in the uptake for to, for to take that wee extra touch inside the box to get a finish. But he's been bright and lively. Obelai plays it back to Ferguson. Keeper waits till there's more movement up front. Strap heads it forward. Pick coming from an offside position, which he was, but he fires the shot off anyway. The goalkeeper gets down to it. Just shows you though he's keeping good position up there, isn't he? He's moving into space. If you get caught off just that wee bit. Yeah, he's, he's got nice movement to his game and he's got a nice touch for the game. So he's always going to find himself in it, that wee bit extra uh, space on the park. He's got an eye for that. Uh, and I think he does score goals as well. I think he's got a good goal scoring record. And, and he is working very hard, there's no doubt about that. Again, to another strong header up into the Queen's half. Aidan Nisbet will leave the throw-in to his teammate Lewis Strap as we head into the last five minutes of this first half. It's been a frenetic pace, Andy. Yeah, that's been good pace, uh, especially the first 20 minutes as far as Morton were concerned, you know. Uh, they lost that wee bit in the 25th to, to where we are right at this moment in time. Now, they just don't seem to be able to get that, uh, that extra touch on the ball in the middle of the park to set things up. Turned into a wee bit of scrap, and, and the Queen of the South, well, they've won that so far in the last 10, 15 minutes, but it'd be nice to get back into playing from the middle of the park again in the wide areas as they did earlier on, Morton. Kiva chases the header down, but it was all the way back to Ferguson. He comes to the edge of the box. He's going to launch one again. He was looking to get the short throw in out there, but he's going to have to put this one high into the Morton half, which he does. Straps underneath it, though. Strong header from Lewis Strap. You can see how accurate the goalkeeper can be when he's no under pressure like that, Jerry. He's be able to play those 30, 40 yard balls in to give them a chance of getting the ball knocked on or picking it up complete. So that's 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 the reason why they're making these runs, as you can see just now, back in to try and put them under pressure. Make them kick it earlier. Again, to underneath that one, Nisbet tries to knock it on, but Orsi on the offside runs past the ball. Kinti should be underneath that one. Heads up, Jacobs gets the knock down. Drop nice and short in though. Quick feet from Queens, but now the chance for McKeever to really run at this defence. Tries to play inside. That's a wonderful ball. Just across if the guy can go into it just at the far end. I was looking to see. I think it was Calvin Orsi coming in at that back post. Yeah, it was a great ball across there. Made a good run to get into the wide area on the right, McKeever. And played a nice ball. One of those slip passes through. Missing out the first two defenders and coming in at the back post was Calvin Orsley, but it was well matched by the Queen of the South defender at that time to get the block in. But another good sharp move again. This would be the perfect time, three minutes to half time, to get that second goal as Lewis Strap 
Goes to take the throw. Gives it short to Nisbet. Strap gets it back, back to Nisbet. The chance to get a right foot curler. Tries to play it across, it's headed clear. Lamar's underneath it, he tries to volley it back. It's headed up into the air. Obelai takes a rather skillful touch, you have to say. Shepard's it away, Omar goes in for the challenge. That's a free kick to Queen of the South as we head towards the half-time whistle. By my watch, we've just over two minutes to play. Headed out once again by Strap. He hasn't been found wanting on that side of the pitch tonight, Andy. No, he's a robust wee fullback, isn't he? He likes to put himself in there. He loves a physical challenge. And he'll get plenty of them tonight. Morton Young, player of the year for last season, of course. Played back across, McLean stabs it clear. Picked up by Orsi, he drops it down that far side. Chipped forward, one to be chased, but that's all the way back. Might even go out for a goal kick. But Ferguson saves that. Obelai wants it in the middle of the park, but Ferguson, you can see, just wants to launch it as we head towards the ashes of the first half. Jacobs underneath it, headed back across into the Queen's half, and that's a slack one coming in, the challenge from William Gibson. But it goes for yet another throw into Morton. I imagine Morton just want to hang on to the ball at this point, Andy. Yeah, it's went scrappy for the last five minutes, Jerry, for both teams. Uh, I think now they just want to see in at half time and see if they can organise it and catch the second breath and take them back to what was being successful for them in the first half. They've just lost their way a wee bit, Morton. Uh, it's not been as as pointed as it was for the first 20 minutes and that'll be a, an item that the, the manager at half time will, will want to address with the players and Strap with the throw in Nisbet takes it down the chest, turns away from one challenge, three Queen's players out there but he gets the ball off wants it back Nisbet retains possession always looking to attack drops it back inside in that far side Nisbet looks to spray the ball out to this near side. Omar's underneath it. Takes a nice first touch. Brings it down. Plays it to Jacobs. Jacobs back to Omar. Josh McPay just losing out on that ball to Omar. Seconds left of this first half. The referee down below me is checking his watch. There wouldn't be much injury time, I'd imagine, Andy. No, only for that substitution, Jerry. So there won't be that long. Obelai moves it onto his right foot. Tries to fire out to the far side, straps underneath it, but the header comes across and McGinty once again will volley that ball high into the Queen's half, and that's one to be chased down. Pete looking to get away from Obelai, he's got a chance to go onto his right foot, this could be the perfect ending to the first half. But Obelai beats him to the challenge, swiftly plays the ball out as McKee now looks to play it back inside, gets it on the run. McKee coming inside the Morton half, checks back from one challenge. Fired it to that far side once again. Taken down nicely, Nisbet marshalling the forward. Drops it back to Reese McCabe, tries to drop it in short. Omar steps in, and that is the last challenge of the first half of first half. But Morton will be absolutely delighted with taking that lead, with Sean McGinty coming in just at the back post and putting a deft header beyond Rohan Ferguson. And that is the difference at halftime between these two teams, Andy. Yep, and uh, what a great chance there at the end. You know, I know it's a long ball from McGinty. It's been missed by the central defender for Queen of the South. It's allowed James Pake to go on. I don't know why he took the extra touch when he went inside the box. He just got to go along and finish it. Uh, and he ended up doing nothing at the end with it, trying to turn it back in again. But the ideal opportunity to go there and have a shot at goal, especially so close to half time, that really should have been 2-0 for Morton, Jerry. I don't think he knew that he had that chance, Andy. He just seemed to run on to Obelai, just seemed to slip. And then, fair credit to the big man, he got back and he got his tackle in, made it difficult for Josh McPeak. He did. McPeak changed his mind. That was the problem. Changed his own mind when he was going through. He actually set up as if he was going to hit it and then took the extra touch. And that heartbeat allowed the big fella to get back in to make that. And it was basically a half-hearted challenge because at the end of it, James McPake had fallen over because of that. Really, he's got to finish that. He's got to go in there and be a bit more positive about it and finish it off. And as I say, that should have been 2-0. And sometimes, Andy, in these situations, you're so keen to get your first competitive goal for a club that it can affect your thinking. And Josh McPake, he ran, he ran on to, he did well. He's been fighting off challenges the whole of this first half. He's played very well, Jerry. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but guys who score goals and guys who play around about the 18 yard line are judged on that as well. It's a composure to do that at that end of the park. Makes it all the difference in the world, you know. And he's not really had a sniff round about the box, and I was always expecting him to go on the box, uh, on the ball, James McPake round about the box. That's his first opportunity, but really, 
really, in the context of the game and the way the games went, that's probably, probably been the best chance in the game. Well, Morton did take the lead in the 17th minute. Sean McGinty ghosting in inside the box and put a rather sweet header just beyond Ferguson. No more than Morton deserved at that point. They've been playing very well, chasing down Queen's at every opportunity, looking to be the brighter side, more active. I think maybe when you're at home, you're looking to always be like that, Andy. Yeah, it would be nice if Morton had to carry that on from the 20th through into the 30th minute, but it seemed to lose their way. But that happens when goals are scored like that. Brings the opposition back in it again. They feel they have something to achieve and try and achieve it very quickly. Yeah, but they, they've played well enough. Morton have been the best side without a shadow of doubt in the first half throughout. But they'll be a wee bit disappointed they just lost their way a wee bit halfway through that first half there, which took the momentum out of the game. And really, really, Queen of the South have only had one chance with the scramble inside the box and the Morton defenders managed to clear it. So it's not as if they've been peppering the goal, Jerry. You know, it's and Morton have made the better chances and more of them. So I hope he'll be quite happy with that. But he would have loved to have seen that second one going in the net. Well, it would just make his half-time team talk just that a little bit easier. But he does have, and we mentioned this before, Andy, he's got a very, very strong bench there with attacking options in the shape of Robbie Muirhead or Gary Oliver. Cammy Salkild, of course, scored that really classy finish last week against Livington. He'll be champing at the bit. He might have been a player that thought, based on that performance, he would be a start tonight. Yeah, he certainly would have done at that time because he did play well last week in the game that we saw, Jerry. But <laughs> players are looking for fitness. We're looking for match fitness at this moment in time. As I said, Morton have only had the Dumbarton game and the Livingston game, and they had to split it up between that. So there's no doubt about it. The substitutes coming on are going to have a big, big part to play in this game. I just thought for the last 10 minutes, Morton looked just a little bit leggy there in the first half as well. You know, maybe getting them in, freshen them back up again, you'll get the 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes out of that, and then the changes will need to be made like that. You know, players will run out of leg for the first few games till they get a bit of match fitness back in. Well, just looking at the Morton substitutes out here warming up, as, as we said, Andy, nine of them on the bench, five of them you can use. Again, just looking at young James Wallace as well. He's another that's come in and impressed in training. I think he was with us for about two to three weeks before the manager made his move. He, of course, he saw him last year in that Scottish Cup game against Brewer Rangers when he had a fairly outstanding game for such a young man. I would be very surprised, Jerry, you made that statement with five substitutes from nine, that five substitutes aren't used tonight. I'd be extremely surprised if that's the case. Yeah, it certainly freshens up the team and as I said before, once we get to the hour mark in the second half, hope he'll be looking for that to try and avert that from happening, you know, players who are going to run out of leg, yeah, he really needs that, and just for 10 minutes 5-10 minutes towards the end there, I just thought they weren't just as sharp, we're beginning to look for the second wind and, and, and the bench does look quite strong for that, you know, you've got Wallace in it you've got Gary Oliver as a front player as well you know, yeah, Robbie Muirhead who can come on and add a bit of pace and strength up front as well. That will be required. Because as you've seen there, you know, uh, James McPake worked hard and so has Ross McKeever as well. And they'll be guys who'll be looking for, for time in the game to get their to get their fitness levels up. But the last twenty minutes of the game will be important for that as well. And of course at one nil, as you say, everything really is in the balance. Alan Johnson would be disappointed again at half time, you know, in deficit obviously, but is there much for him to take from that first half performance or is there a wee bit more questions that he has to ask at this Morton defend? Well, they'll need to up front like that. They'll probably want uh, one or two players, Stephen Dobie especially, to get himself maybe a wee bit further forward. But they actually had to pull their way back into the game again after Morton had scored in the 20 minutes that they had had. So he'll be quite pleased that they've been able to do that and get their passes sorted out. They need to get more bodies forward as well, Queen of the South, and that's what they'll be trying to do in the second half. But... You know, Alan Johnson and Sandy Clark will be delighted down there at that second one. James McPeak went through and never went down there. That made the team talk really interesting. I suppose we couldn't really expect, or can we expect, a repeat of that 4-0 drubbing. That was Morton with their, their tails flying high. We were in a really good position at that point in the season, really going for it, showing the kind of form of a team that, not just getting to the playoffs, but a team that was showing the kind of form that Dundee United showed to actually win the championship. Oh, that, that, that game that day, in such a miserable day too as well, Jerry. I remember it well. Uh, conditions were absolutely deplorable, and Morton played very well. That made people in that division sit up and take notice that maybe Morton were going to turn the corner a wee bit in the league last year. And it was a comprehensive victory that day, and, and some great goals scored as well. I would say no to a 4 0 here tonight, Jerry, by the way we've been watching it, but it would be nice. We'll take it if it comes along. I was talking to Gary Oliver uh, pre match as well. Of course, Gary was in the Queen of the South squad that day. He was on the bench for the 4 0 and immediately said to him, you know, so what did, what did you make of that result? 
and he says, uh, oh, I thought we did really well that day. I said, did you get beat for nothing? He says, no, no, when I say we, I mean Morton, because of course he's a Morton man now, so he has to say that as well. Old habits die hard. It doesn't matter how many clubs you're in, but there's always one that holds special fondness in your heart at the end of your career, you know, when you look back. And I would imagine Morton will do that. You know, I spoke to him myself a couple of weeks ago, and he was reminiscing a wee bit about the nice partnership he had at that time with Katongo, mm -hmm. and then really enjoyed his spell down here and really enjoyed playing in front of Morton supporters. So that was nice to hear as well. He has, he has fun memories, but he, he wants more of these now, you know, when he's back here at Morton again. He wants to be back playing again, get a bit of game time in and score goals from Morton. We've been like Aidan Nesbitt in that respect, isn't he? Really, in that, you know, Aidan, you know, for all that he's, he's played around a few clubs, he came through the ranks, obviously, at Celtic, etc., as well. But it's really down at Morton that he's made his name. Yeah, no, yeah, he seems to enjoy it. He seems to be comfortable with it. Yeah, he's but cocky. He's a, he's a cheeky chappy, is he not? Yeah, he is. You know, one or two wee, wee nips on there in the first half about his end product. And he, I, I think he knows he has to work on that about himself. But he's got talent. He's got ability. He can, he can get the ball down. He can play and it excites people. You know, he'll be the type of player that, you know, opposition fans will not like to see on the ball as well. But Martin would like to see on the ball all the time. Just, as I said before, that wee bit of extra composure at the end that finishes off all the good work and all the hard work that he's put in before. And, uh, yeah, he's been, at some, he's been at some decent football clubs, but Morton is that kind of place, Jerry. You know, either, either goes into your heart or goes out the window, one or two of them, you know. Oh, you would know better than anyone. He's, he's, he's a character as well. We talked about that with Nizzy many a time, that he's, he's an absolute character. And, of course, you always speak to me about, you know, there aren't enough characters in the game now compared to your time. Now, I know... At any drop of the heart, you like to refer back to <laughs> your periods in playing, but who were, the, who were the really big characters in the dressing room, in your dressing room? Jerry, I can't remember that's that long ago <laughs> now, you know. <laughs> uh, okay, it's, it, it's no me that does it, Jerry, it's other people that do that, keep reminding it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, well, they had big characters in the dressing room. Guys here went on to have quite comprehensive careers in mm -hmm. the game after it, you know, so uh, they were good, play good players and, and a good team at that time, you know. Sometimes it can be a wee bit embarrassing when people bring up stuff like that and sometimes they only mention your name in it, you know, which was totally and completely out of place, you know, there was some smashing player. Tomo, big Bobby Thompson was a great player. Mark McGee, who I started my career down here way at Morton, mm -hmm. he was doing it at the time, he went on to a fantastic career. You know, and you know, I bring up the fact that a lot of the guys came, gave the supporters a good service, gave the team good service down here and made money for the club at the same time. You know, good, vast sums of money, you know, half million quids all over the place, so uh, it was good, you know, it built up a reputation here for, for the other guys that were left behind to try and uh, get to those achievements as well, you know, it was always nice to come down and play, but great place to play, the supporters, if they like you down here, somehow or another, we're 40 years away from when I played down here, Jerry, and, mm. you know, it, it's nice to come down and, and, and see a smile on people's face when you come in through the door. Well, that's the thing, because we had Dom Sullivan, of course, last year at uh, Hospitality, he came in for us, and... Homer as well, of course, Jim Holmes come down. Um, when you talk to these guys, and certainly Dom Sullivan said to me, it's just nice to be remembered, it's just nice to come back and for people to say, listen, I, I, I came to Capitol when you were here, I remember a particular game, a particular goal. I mean, people always talk to you about two goals in particular that you scored, um, obviously, against Aberdeen and against Patrick Thistle, but it was great to see other people saying to you different goals that you'd scored that you probably couldn't remember anyway. I could they? you know. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for my tea last <laughs> night, Jerry. I'm at that age, I told you. Uh, but that was that was all pre-television and all that kind of stuff, so, you know. Uh, pre-television? Yeah. Oh, was uh, it that uh, far away, was it? Pre-football and television, you know. We got uh -huh. one game on a Saturday night and that was it. And I don't think I was ever in on a Saturday night at that time to watch it, you know. <laughs> uh, so, no, it was good. That, that kind of, I think we got 140 goals down here and it'd be nice somewhere along the line if somebody had them on and some old Betamax tape that I could keep a hoodie and look through but it was important to, to, to score goals like that but it was also important to entertain people down here as well that was a big prerequisite to the whole thing you know we were getting good crowds in and people enjoyed coming along and they wanted to be entertained they wanted to be see their team winning but they wanted to see their team winning in the proper manner uh, and nothing's changed you know football's a bit like that we're missing the supporters tonight Jerry because of that you know yeah uh, they want to come along they want to see their team playing well which they would have done for for a good percentage of the first half there. And uh, it's always nice when you see your team winning. Nice to see them winning at half-time, and great to see them winning at full-time. Well, hopefully you're enjoying the coverage here on TON TV. I know we have had some technical problems. We hope they had them solved for you. I should also point out 
that uh, there is a geography situation in here where the posts never change inside the stand, so we can only apologise if occasionally you're losing part of the picture because of where our camera is. It's the only place we can take up position. You can uh, see the posts as well, but hopefully that's not deterring from your enjoyment of the game and indeed the enjoyment of the scoreline at this point, which is of course more than one queen in the south now. Yes, yeah, great half time score and hopefully kick on in the second half. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking round about, there's enough substitutes out there for not to be making too many changes after 45 for David Hopkins, so uh, it's got the look of the same as the first 45 to see how it goes. Is it the classic hour mark? Get to the hour, see what's happening, see what you think, or if it's still one nothing, you think the manager just keep it nice and tight and cagey? Uh, no, you'll probably look at a certain 10, 15 in the second half to have a look, but also as well, you know, you can throw into the pot, you know, somebody to pick up a wee strain or a knock maybe, and you wouldn't want to use them for the second half like that, you know. The five substitutes gives them a wee bit of an option to be able to do that, but, you know, <laughs> I would imagine an hour, you know, and, and, and he'll be looking maybe to freshen it up a bit up front because McPeak and McKeever get it right that time, Jerry. Yep, got it right. They have worked particularly hard up there. Or he could do that for 90 minutes by the looks of him. He's got that look that he could, he could actually play two games in the night down here. But the rest of them are a wee bit, uh, a wee bit lighter and looking for game time as well, putting minutes into their legs. So I would imagine, I imagine changes will come in an hour or just after the hour. Looking down on the pitch as well, I can see Midge Miller, Chris loyal servant to the club in this new role of course Andy uh, we've been into training and seen him uh, he's been taking the players through the warm-up and the warm down he's still registered as a player he's not on the, the squad tonight but do, do you see him maybe play a part this season oh, well he could you know he could you never know he's certainly as fit as a flea the wee fella anyway I've seen him running about there at Parkway enjoying himself he's got he's got a great attitude towards the game uh, the game and great commitment and determination uh, and also as well he's a Morton man you know, to touch on that, Midgey and Jim McAllister have been here, you know, with, with spells away at other clubs, but they've come back here to finish off their career, and that shows you how they feel about the club. And the fact, it looks as if it'll be, he's got a good attitude towards him, he'll be a good coach, the wee fella, Midge. And just as we say that, Jim McAllister, the experienced pro that he is, leading his team back out onto the park for the second half, just looking through the ranks, to see if there's any obvious changes, nothing at the moment. I can see even in the Dunhamers, they seem to be content with, of course, they've already made that change, bringing on Aidan Fitzpatrick in the first half for Daniel Pybus. I don't know what that was yet, Andy, do we? No, I don't think so. I think it, I think he looked as if he'd a stomach upset the way. You know, he grimaced in the way off the park and rubbed his belly as if he'd ate a couple of pies, Jerry. So I'm taking it to be it must be a stomach problem. Yeah, a grimace, rubbing your stomach, all that cap. Well, that takes me back a few years, Andy, to watching you play. Yeah. Yep. As long as you paid your money to get in, Jerry, that was all that mattered. <laughs> or I used to climb over the gate to get in here. Oh, well, you could have went under it, Jerry. <laughs> Morton will get us underway in the second half, shooting from Sinclair Street down to the wee Dublin end. Jim McAllister, remember, made that choice to switch for the opening exchanges in the first half. It will be. McKeever gets his underway in the second half, and immediately McLean tries to fire it out, but it's picked up, and McAllister goes back to McGinty, takes it onto his left foot, looks to fire it down the line, it's cleared up once again. Strap goes in to get the challenge in. There's one to be chased down. McGinty should see that one cleared. Tried to play it off for the throw-in. Now Strap has it, but he's hemmed in down at that corner. Queen's coming out, fighting this second half. Nisbet gets underneath it, but Dobby wins it, takes it down on his arm though. Yep. The veteran didn't like that call, but it was there for all to see, Andy. Yeah, it hit his hand on the way back out again. Uh, a bit difficult for Morton, they're trying to get the ball out from the left back position there. Caused their own problems by not being able to get the ball cleared like that. When it's knocked out, definitely hits Stephen Dobby in the hand and drops down, so it's a definite foul. Eden McAdams will take this. Didn't have much to do in that first half, Andy, has to be said. No, he didn't. Uh, well, much to my enjoyment, he didn't, you know, there was a few times when they put the box that Queen of the South was looking to get better efforts at them like that, and they were a bit poor. Horsey backing in to Buchanan, and then goes to, to block the free kick. Referee Don Robertson doesn't like that. Calvin Horsey pointing out that Queen's were looking to steal a few yards there as Bobby Bive pays it out on that far side. Chance once again. Max what to do is run, tries to play the one-two, cut out by McLean, back to Omar, he 
has it straight up into the Queen of the South half. Nisbet goes in to get the challenge. Gibson steps away. Two veterans combining there. Dobby takes it off Gibson once again. Rides the challenge, plays it back to Olivai. Queen's having the better of this opening minute, and just as you say that, of course, they put it out carelessly. Morton have the throw in on the far side. Yeah, Morton have a little bit careless themselves, Jerry, in the middle of the park there. They've broken up the move a couple of times and, and returned the ball back cheaply to, to Queen of the South. Uh, if we want to get better possession of the ball, you know. A couple of times there, Kyle Jacobs should have used the ball a little bit better as well when he'd won it. Queen of the South coming forward once again, crossing into the Morton half. Dobby has it. Checks back, looks to advance up the pitch, drops it down the channel. That's one for East to chase down to the corner. McLean keeps his attention close to the forward, holds him down at the corner flag. Does well, McLean, but he gets the ball away. East has it once again, he heads down towards the goal line, tries to clean him, but it's headed away by McGinty and now picked up, played forward. It's a slack one though, out it goes. Throw in once again to Queen of the South. Morton trying to get into attack from defence quickly, and Yeah, McKeever should have held on to the ball there. Uh, taking it in, even if he's to attract a foul, it allows Morton to come out like that. He just played a slack pass and allowed possession to go back to Queen's. Horsley picks it up, no support though. Rampages into the Queen's half. You can see Nisbet on this near side, but it breaks once again. Queen of the South take it forward, trying to chip the ball down the line. McAdams. Watches that go all the way out for a goal kick. We have played three minutes of this second half. It's Morton 1, Queen of the South 0. Yeah, both sides trying to find their feet a wee bit here at the start of the second half. Passing's been a bit slack. You can hear both dugouts crying for the same thing. Keep the ball. Get the ball down, just play it. Yep. Jim McAllister telling the Morton side to just get a little bit more narrow. Orsi once again, physical challenge underneath Buchanan. Queen South have the free kick to try to take quickly. It's picked up by Dobby. He releases it down the channel to Shields. Straps there, Strap and Nisbet combining together to bring the ball away. That ball coming off the arm. Yes, indeed. Oh. Referee not liking what he's heard. Yeah, he's having a word with in his bit there for what he said to him. It was a foul. The referee was just waiting for clarification from the linesman on it as well. So, you know, I think he felt he was getting his gears retugged as well. Maybe that's what he's complaining about. Which is the lot of a player like Aiden, you know, to, to play in that area, to have what he has as a gift. He's going to get a lot of that because he likes to jink with the ball at his feet. Yeah, that's the that's price you have to pay, Jerry, you know. But uh, I don't know what. He's, he's obviously said something that the referee is not very pleased about. You know, put it in the bag, Aiden, go on with the game. And McGinty to take the free kick. High up towards the edge of the box, headed back down, picked up by McKee. He rolls it down to Dobby. Dobby checks inside, drops it back down to McKee once again. Three Morton players around McKee doing well, getting the challenge in, knocking it out for a throw in to Queen of the South to be taken by Gibson. Roll back across, now Queen's once again look to come inside Morton's half of the territory and that's a nice step away dropped into Fitzpatrick, gets it back, plays the 1-2 Omar tries to get the challenge in but it's opening up here just down inside the box for Queen's East tries to get it across and McAdams takes that one quickly looks to release it just as quickly the overarm throw out in that far side Kiever picks it up does well, holds possession, McPeak looks it in short, now he gets it, Nisbet looking for it on this near channel, but McPeak trying to go onto his right foot, drops it down to McKeever once again, he shapes to try and get the ball across, checks back, Omar, first time cross into the box, it's a high one, up in the air, headed clear by Gibson. Dobby unlucky not to pick it up there, there's Rabin Omar, tries to find Aiden Nisbet once again, Gibson takes it down nicely on his chest, Plays the ball to McKee. He sends it forward to Fitzpatrick. Queen's coming forward once again. Omar opts not to put the challenge in in case he gets a foul. And McAdams once again takes it confidently. Plays it out to Nisbet. Gibson's there. 
Nisbet drops a lovely ball inside, but McPig just can't take it, and Queens have the ball once again. Fitzpatrick plays it down towards East. He'll chase this down. He should be able to get the cross in. Tries to get it across, and out it goes for the second corner of the match. It remains Morton 1, Queen of the South nil. Yeah, both clubs. Eh, both sides are making mistakes that allow the other back on the ball again, and... You know, Queen of the South will be able to get through in that inside left position a couple of times there. You know, a little bit more care of the ball. I think the referee got in the road there. Calvin Orsley, when he came across to take the short ball there and blocked his sight a wee bit, but it allowed them to attack from the centre. And that's not always a good idea. Joe McKee with the resultant corner on the far side. Up towards Olubaya, tries to get in. It's knocked inside, and it is indeed. It's a goal for Queen of the South. Corner came over. Obelai got his head down to it, and I'm trying to see, I think it was Stephen Dobby, of course, of all men who just got onto that, put it into the net, he seems to be the man they're giving the plaudits to, but there remains the fact that we have gone almost eight minutes into the second half, and it's now Morton 1, Queen of the South 1. Yeah, there was nothing on the corner, the corner was played in, a looping corner inside, I don't know how the marking was in the box, but the big fella was able to break the marking inside the box, get his header on towards the goal on target, I think Dobby just got a touch on to take it beyond McAdam like that. But the marking in the box was poor there, Jerry. I know two ways about it. Big fella shouldn't be getting a free header like that from the penalty spot. One each it is, as McLean now chips it up. Buckhannon's underneath it, gets the header up. McGinty now. Morton trying to slow the pace down a little bit. Omar steps away. Looking for the option, though. Nicely taken up by the ever eager McPake. He tries to play into Orsi. Orsi just gets underneath it. Goalkeeper does well. Smothers by a good ball coming in to Orsi. And now Strap tries to get in for the challenge. But Shields coming away. Queens with their tails flying high now after that equaliser. As McKee plays it out on the far side. Gets it back. Will be light. Plays it to Gibson. Chip down the channel once again. Sean McGinty's there, he gets it onto his left foot. Fires up towards the touchline. Nice take by Nisbet down on his chest, but the ball's flicked out once again. Nisbet losing out in the challenge. Ball stabbed forward. Fitzpatrick now takes it onto his right foot, skipping away from one challenge. Skipping away from a second. He's inside the box, but Lamar comes in and makes a vital interception to knock it out for Queen's third corner. And they have started this second half in rampant mode, Andy. Yeah, they have. They're beginning to turn up the heat a bit in Morton. Uh, they won a couple of challenges, midfield took them in the 18-yard box there, and they stumbled his way through more than anything else, the Queen's player there. But uh, they kind of a, a wee bit ragged there since they start the second half, Jerry Martin just suddenly got back into that system again, and they've paid the penalty that by losing a goal. Wouldn't want to lose another one here. Well, the last goal came from a corner. As you say, Andy, Morton will have to be very, very careful here as McKee lines up the cross ball. Played again to... The Will be live, but it's headed down towards the edge of the box, and now Morton have the chance to clear, and it's a large pump up to McPake. Orsi and McKeever busting a gut to get down towards the box. McPake does well, just tries to get away from the defender, and it's chipped clear once again. McKee picks it up on the touchline, steps inside. Nisbet and Strap. Strap does well, plays it off McKee. Nisbet wants it quickly with the throw in. Strap has to take his time. Captain comes looking for the ball, but Strap's going to try and throw a high ball down the pitch. Plenty of jockeying for position. Orsi picks it up, shows nice strength, holds up. The defender plays it back to McLean. He in turn switches it out to Omar. Omar now, a little bit of space to motor if he wants to. He drops it in short for Jacobs. Back inside, nice turn away in that far side by McKeever, he plays it back, Jacobs is on to it, tries to fire the first time ball across, Nisbet chases it down. Strong challenge from Shields, does well there, and Lewis Strat will take the yellow for that, taking one for the team Andy. Yeah, yeah, that was a good move down the side there, McIver released by, uh, on, on the right hand side, lap. played a good ball and a good touch on by... Jacobs, you know, just needed somebody to back up play at the back post there and they got a free knock into the net. But it was a little bit more promising for Morton. They kept the ball better, that's the most important thing. It's the movement of the front three that's making the difference, isn't it, Andy? Yeah. McKeever, you could see uh, McPake, uh, Norsey, absolutely busting a gut to try and get onto that ball. When McPake, they're getting into the box, looking for the ball to come across. And that's something that uh, David Hopkins will take great hope from at the moment. Yeah, well, 
Peak had got the ball early uh, just before that as well. You know, a little bit of lack of support at that time, which meant he had to go himself and lost out in the ball. But the way back up again, he was back in the box. I'm just saying if we could get somebody, maybe Eden Nisbet getting round that back post a little bit earlier would have been a, a tap in for him like that. But it caused problems when they're getting down the side again. Uh, McKeever useful on that end of the park. Resulting free kick will be taken by Gibson, right footed. Strap does well to get the challenge in, out it goes, and Morton have the throw in. Down the position, they probably wouldn't want it, Andy, down close to the corner flag, and Lewis Strap will really need to try and launch this one down the park a bit. Yeah, he's going to have to do that, or even if he takes it short and gets it played back and play out by foot, you know, he doesn't always need to throw it up the park like that, but you've got, you've got to make yourself a bit of space to the other players to allow that to happen. Obviously, knocks the header on, but Obelai is underneath it. He plays the first time ball out all the way, it goes out for the goal kick. McAdams will take that. Trying to see if there's any possible changes that the manager might be looking to make, Andy. Yeah, I don't think up front at this moment in time, he'll always have an eye on the middle of the park like that, you know. He'll be keeping an eye in there because that's the engine room. They're the people that will go first if anybody goes physically. But I like to see them getting on the ball the way they did in the first 20 minutes and pass the ball better. They've lost their way a wee bit that way, Morton. Certainly when the ball's in the air, it seems to favour Queen's but Lamar now comes across the halfway line. Has to check back. Drops it in short. It's a nice ball. Pake has it. Kiever wants it. He fires it across. Obilai gets the challenge in. Knocks it out. Dobby looks to take it down, but Omar. Bit of an experience push there, would you say, Andy? Yeah, it was a wee shove in the back that just took him off balance, but. Yeah, Rama. Rabar was able to get back on Sinka with yep. it again. He recovered well. Going forward. There's one to be chased down by East. McGinty comes across, takes control of the situation, knocks it down to McAdam. McAdam does it exceptionally well. They're very, very cool under pressure to play the pass off to Brian McLean, who comes up towards the halfway line. Knocks it inside to the eager McPake. He sets off in one of those runs once again, heading up towards. 18 yard line, he retains possession, does well. Another pull of the shirt there, I thought. Andy's McPake plays it in short. And is but now looking to go onto that right foot, tries to curl one and out it goes. A bit of a waste there, Faden is, but McPake had did really well. You know, he tried to work a, a situation round about the box there that would allow him a pass through to the front player and lost the ball and won it back himself. Getting out to Aiden like that, he's really got to step inside. Get a shot on target, Jerry. That's what you want out of that exercise. And we've seen him do it so many times before, Andy. Just he checks into that right hand side and just gets his right foot around it and curls it. He's curled some, some hit the bar last week from that position. Yeah, he's got the ability to do that, but you've got to do it on a regular basis, Jerry. That's what it's all about as well. You know, if he knows he's got that in his locker, he's got to do it regular. As we head towards the hour mark, it's Morton 1, Queen of the South 1. Chipped forward, Orsi. Chases it out to that far side. Here's Buchanan, but he does well. Orsi turns away, trying to go onto his right foot, play it back across, and it's just starred, but the goalkeeper does well to get underneath that. Yeah, that was a good move. He worked it himself, Orsi. Uh, got, it in the, got it in the corner of the 18-yard box, like, got a great turn, took the defender on, stood him up, took it by him, across the box, and Aidan but it's only inches away from connecting with that ball. That's a little bit more like it from Morton, Andy, getting the ball down trying to play passes instead of putting the ball high up into there. Yes, that's that's the way forward all the time, you know. Orsio when he's fair share in there, but McPake and McKeever look as if they're the type of players that want it to their feet. Yeah, so they've got to be demanding from others to get it and play the passes and get the ball to feet. Any time they've got turned on the Queen's defence, they've always caused them a problem like that. Here's the first substitute, Jerry. Yep, just as you said, Andy, our mark. Uh, David Hopkin turns to his bench. He's bringing the goal scorer uh, from last week onto the park. Cammy Salkeld and Calvin Orsi, who's really worked a shift and it goes off. Yeah, well, I'd expected he had maybe stayed on a bit longer, but uh, he has worked hard. The front three have all worked hard, you know, and I think maybe Hoppy's trying to get extra minutes into McKeever and McPake's legs. Uh, but he did, Salkeld played well last week for the time that he was on, and he, he's a handful for people when he gets ahead of steam up. Well, he is one of these players, Andy, that um, when you spoke to him during lockdown, he was spending a lot of it just working on weights and, and getting his physical shape right. He couldn't play much football, but he was determined to work on his physical shape. Well, I never done that during lockdown <laughs> anyway, Jerry, so you could kill that off as a, a bad idea. McGinty, underneath it, heads it back across. 
Good header from McGinty once again. Nisbet trying to get on to it. It's taken down by McAllister. Tries splitting short. That's well, the captain gets it out to Omar. Well, trying to release, but it's not happening. Jacobs now. He chips it down the line. That's one for McKeever to chase, and he's certainly got the pace for it. He plays a first-time ball across, and Obelai gets it out. Just trying to see if it, Morton changed the formation a wee bit here, Andy. Uh, they have a wee bit, you know, I think. We, we all see coming off like that. They're going to ask the, the two front players of McKeever and, and McTake maybe to re play a wee bit further forward up the park and allow Salkiel to come in and play in the hole a wee bit, you know. But you, you really don't know. It'll depend, it'll depend on what Hoppy sees. I think they're losing the front player like that. He was hoping to get players coming from the middle of the park to support the front too. Throw in high into the box, headed on, but the goalkeeper takes it down immediately. Overhand throw. Dobby, still got a fair bit of pace. It's Shields that picks it up. McAllister keeps him in attendance. Gibson on the overlap. Shields turns inside. It's chipped up. Taken down, left footed shot. That was really dangerous for Morton. He's turning onto his left foot, trying to drill the shot. Now it goes for the fourth corner of the match to Queen of the South. Yeah, he set that up nicely for them, didn't he, Jacobs? He yep. came out and sold himself right on the 18 yard box like that, you know. Pelic had got a free turn inside the box and nearly made Morton pay for that. Stay on your feet. Queen's looking to step up the pressure with yet another corner. Taken right footed. Well, he's underneath it once again. He really is a handful of these set pieces, Andy. Oh, he's a big fella, all right. He's always going to be like that. I fully expected that to be happening. For the goal, I expected him to be picked up. I didn't ever expect throughout the 90 minutes tonight that he'd get free headers. That would be something that Hop Davy Hopkins would be saying to central defenders, make sure that big fella doesn't get a free header on it. And he did, and he made them pay. Buchanan underneath that one again. Omar tries to stab it forward. Kiva tried to get the challenge in, get the ball moving. The Queens pick it up back inside the Morton half once again. Played down that far side. Omar does well, though, gets the challenge in. Fitzpatrick keeps the tenacity going, but Omar has it. He drops it in nice and short. Morton trying to clear the lines. Omar fires it into the centre of the pitch. McKeever knocks the header on. Strap picks it up. He's got McPake on this near side if he wants him. Robust challenge coming in from Shields. Gives Queens the throw in. Gibson takes a touch and comes McPeak, but the ball breaks down this side to Shields. McAllister picks up, tries to step away from the midfielder. Takes a nice short ball to Nisbet. He soon releases it. Chance for McPeak to come forward now. Trying to go into his left foot. Strong challenge going and a free kick to Morton and a real chance here. And that has to be a yellow end here. Yeah, it looks like a yellow card. He's, he slid in and took the player first. Did take the ball, but it was after he'd taken the player, you know, and it looked like a foul because they were running through on top of goals like that. It looks like a yellow card, Jerry. I'm not too sure whether he's actually shown it to him, is he? He's got it out, Andy. I yeah, think he's about to show it. Yeah, yeah. It's a dangerous position, this, you know. This will give Aidan this bit an opportunity to have a look because it's, it's a right footer free kick. Uh, if he can use a bit of swerve on the ball, we keep the pace on. Yeah. 25 yards from goal. On this near side to the D, he's placing it down, Aiden, he fancies it. Yeah, also got a greasy pitch as well, you know, even if we can go over the wall and get it down quickly, bouncing in front of the goalkeeper, anything could happen after that. You'd have fancied this position, eh? I'd have loved that, I'd have loved it. It's a nice, and the ball would be nice and light to get up over all the wall, you know. He's got the ability to do this, Aiden, this man. I'd like to see him show it like this. 65 minutes gone here at Capital, it remains Morton 1, Queen of the South 1 but there's even Nesbitt them out to make the difference for that. The free blows his whistle, he takes it right foot. It is that curler that he likes to get, but it's just up and over the bar. Yeah, he's a yard too high when it's like that. Try to keep the pace on the ball as well. You know, I would have liked it if he'd maybe hit it over the wall, down into the ground to use the pace off the ground and see what the goalkeeper made it. But he's a yard short of having a good free kick out there. But yeah, a yard's a long way, isn't it? That's <laughs> a long way, you're absolutely right. He got good action on Andy, but just as you say, just that wee bit too... Yeah, he got it to turn, Jerry, but no enough. He's got to get it in target. Free kick's worth nothing if it doesn't go in target. Nothing. Centre of a donut. Ginty's underneath that one. Powerful hater. Taken up by Nisbet once again. Tries to drop it down the line for McPeak. He was chasing that, but he couldn't just get onto it. Yeah, that was nice the way they worked it out. Like. 
This is the time in the game, Jerry, where we look the managers and the coaching staff. We were looking at players physically when we're running the next ten minutes. This bit retains possession, feeds it to Mar on that far side. Salkeld wants it down the line. Hasn't had much of the ball since he came on, Cami Salkeld, but he plays it back now. Jacobs, back to Salkeld, drops it inside. Omar has it now, trying to go into his left foot, trying to play it back into Salkeld. It's picked up by the eager Aiden is, but he chips it up towards the centre of the box. It's a good ball in, but nobody gets onto it. And Queens get the ball away. Yeah, it was a good play again. It's a great ball into the box for Aiden is, but really got to get people charging the box like that. That's, that's where you score your goals. If you're a goal scorer, that's where you're going to get them in around about the six yard ball, balls and crosses. Peak holds off one defender, holds off a second, tries to play the ball out to Salka, just that little bit short. It's picked up by Jacobs once again. He flights it into the box, it's a high one to the far side. Peak's underneath it, trying to go into his right foot this time, he's back inside the box and gets a shot away and it's into the back of the net! Wonderful work from Morton there, just played the ball back inside. Superb work from McPake, fired the shot off low and there was Nisbet to stab at home. It's Morton 2, Queen of the South 1. Yeah, it was a great goal there. Worked well. McPake's done really well when he's come back in on his right foot like that. And just what we were talking about earlier on, coming around the back post like that. Aidan Nisbet's done that to come around in to get a tap in. You know, there was an opportunity earlier on for that. But they were just beginning to brighten up again there for five minutes more and keeping the ball and using it properly. Uh, he's shown what a good player McPake is there when he's cut inside and played the ball across like that. And fair play to Aidan is, but that's him. Got off the mark this season, Jerry, and we probably won't have heard the last of that. I would certainly think not, Andy. Just doing what he does best. He comes in there and just sees half opportunity, works it, and then just stabs it past the goalkeeper. You've got to be there, Andy. That's what you have to do. That's what it's all about. Round about that 60 yard box is where you're going to score all your goals. If you're a forward player at all, you see the move develop, get round about, make sure you're in with. The breadth of the goals like that, and that's what Aidan is, but then they are to, to have a tap in more or less, but you've got to be there to score them, Jerry. Queens have the free kick, be interesting to see how they react. Arguably, they've certainly had the best of the opening 20 minutes or so of the second half. But now, Morton, a little bit of confidence, nice turn away by Nisbet, plays it to McPake. McPake tries to get away from Gibson, but it's picked up by Shields. Nisbet goes in for the tackle. Claims he got the ball. Yeah, I thought it was a good tackle, Jerry. I thought he made contact with the ball and took the ball away clean enough. I think the tumble made the referee's mind up from there, but I thought it was a clean tackle. Once again, with the ominous sight of Ayo Obilai getting into the box, as Morton looked to make the change before the free kick. Robbie Muirhead looking to come on in place of Ross McKeever. Yeah, he's worked really hard. He's worked hard, McKeever, no doubt about that. And you really don't know how much game time he's had at Mullow prior to come down here on loan. So he'll take a wee while to find his feet. But he'll be a good acquisition for, Mo for Morton this season. Don't doubt that. Referee allowing Morton to make the change before this free kick. Don't think that went down too well with the Dunhamers dugout. But just from what I can see, the big Robbie takes up position in the middle of the pitch. Of that Morton half. Heads back towards the 18 yard line. It's fired again. Obelai goes up, but that's a strong challenge coming in. Headed back out. Now Muirhead with his first touch takes it away. Trying to change defence into attack. Releases Omar, but that's just a little bit over hit. Omar chases back. Does well. Rabin Omar does exceptionally well, but the referee took exception to it. Ah, oh, the referee's kidding himself on with that. They both bumped into each other by shoulder. The Mars showed a bit more determination to get to the ball, and the referee's made a poor decision there. I thought you were going to see something else. <laughs> 71 minutes played here at Campbell. It's Morton 2, good of the South 1. Great touch there by, by the big fella. Yeah, Rayside as well to get, to get round and get on the ball, and then he's sloppy with a pass out like that. He just wasted all the good work that he'd done before to get Morton up the park. Bit more care, but he's only on, so hopefully yep. he'll warm up to it as he's going along. Robbie Muirhead sorry, brought sorry. on as a substitute. Instant impact almost there, wasn't it? Turned away, trying to initially get the, the attack going. Yeah, I was that peeved off him, I forgot his name there. <laughs> we can forgive you that. Thank you. Obelai plays it out in the far side. Salkel steps in, tries to get the challenge. Left back does well though. The Queen's with the chance to attack, but 
stab challenge coming in. Superb play in the middle of the park there. Now out to Salkild. Comes across the pitch, deep inside Queen's territory. Rolls out to McPake. This is where the goal came from last time. McPake trying to get onto that right foot, heading up towards the edge and just fires it down. Super save by Ferguson, but the ball's still alive. Salkill puts it across. Offside. It's blocked by the defender, but he's offside. And Josh McPake, once again, Andy, gets onto the ball, wants to find just that extra yard to get a shot away. Yeah, he's a bit of quality when he gets the ball at his feet like that. That's why I was so disappointed with him just before half time with what he did, Jerry. But really, in the second half of that, he's been Morton's most dangerous forward. Getting the ball, going at people, trying to take them on and create. Yeah, it looks as if it'll be a good acquisition here as well. I understand he is a favourite of Stephen Gerrard up at Rangers. And he thinks he's one for the future. Yeah, well, he could be. He's certainly got enough ability. But these are the situations now when you come and loan from big clubs like Rangers and Celtic. You've got to prove your worth down here. You know, Morton supporters will be able to, to make that judgment on him as the season goes on. Lou Strap with one of his traditional mammoth throws all the way down there, Muirhead. Trying to hang on to it as yet another substitution being made down by Morton here. And it will be I'm trying to see down there. It's Luca Colwell. Luca will be coming on. And he will be taking the place of the goal scorer, Aidan Nesbitt. Now we talked about this before, Andy, that the manager would try to utilise substitutes in terms of getting the energy out and getting the game time. Yeah, you've got to put minutes into the players' legs as well. You know, that's probably uh, the benefit all round for the Bet Fred Cup. You know, to, as far as squads concerned, you can give everybody a run out, and the five makes all the difference like that. You've been able to, to chop and change, and give minutes to players that you're going to be hopefully given the opportunity to use throughout the whole season. I, I said to you at the start, Jerry, I'd be surprised if the five of them didn't go on. Harry Robinson coming on for Saints, and although I think it was the number 10 board that was held up, but I think it was actually uh, Stephen Dobby that went off, Andy. Um, I'm looking for him, I can't see him. Yeah, yep. could be. Yeah. Yep. Veteran departs the scene. Morton leading by two goals to one. Muirhead now trying to get physical with Buchanan. Does well. Takes it down. Tries to volley over the top. That's one to be chased down into the channel. Goalkeeper makes the save though. Camley comes out. Takes it off. That was cool play by the central defender there for Queen of the South. You know, Played it back to the goalkeeper off his thigh. And, uh, showed a bit of confidence through that. So, so close to the goal. Being under pressure there. The goalkeeper did well as well. He's look, he's it was a smart save handy. as well from Josh McPake a couple of moments ago, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's been going one way and McPake's released the ball back the way he's been going. So he's got to change direction on it, which is difficult for goalkeepers. Yeah, it would, it would be nice if the ball had picked off pace of the park a wee bit with the, with the wetness on it. It might have helped McPake there, but it was a good effort. And he's changed direction well. He got a good, strong hand on it. Queen's with the throw just in front of the Morton dugout. One chipped over, McGinty chases it down, but he's on that run. Will he get to it? Nope, out it goes. This is the tactic, get the ball in behind the Morton defence, Andy. Yeah, a bit fortunate for Morton there that the ball picked up pace that I was talking about off the grass there to take it away. And McGinty get caught underneath the ball there. You know, he's, he really got to give himself that extra two or three yards going back to come onto it. And it could have been dangerous if the ball had stopped on the way through. Could have been dangerous for Morton there, but it didn't. It picked up pace. Lucky for McGinty, eh? 75 minutes played here at Capelo Park. It is Grunick Morton 2, Queen of the South 1 in this Betfred Cup tie as Muirhead looks to feed McPake once again. He drops it in short for Colville, takes a touch, does well to get across. Nope, out it goes. Well, certainly look at Colville screaming for the corner. Your your thoughts and opinions, Andy Ritchie? Goal kick, Jerry. <laughs> Well, yeah. now, that you've, now that you've assessed it from all angles, yeah, thanks, Andy. I did, yeah, look at Colwell got the last touch on it, and I think he's, uh, he's begging rather than complaining. Colwell is, picks it up after a superb challenge by McAllister. McPake now heading down towards the angle, You'll get drops the it into Colwell. Colwell's got the chance to chip it across. It's blocked, though. Yeah, a weak finish there at the end for look at Colwell. Made a great run to get in there and get himself in the position, and it was such a weak affair there at the end. It was quite embarrassing. Just getting a wee bit more game time, possibly, to get him up to speed. As Gibson picks it up just inside the Morton half. Plays it back to McCabe. Plays it in short. Fitzpatrick has it. Tried to play it into his strike partner, but it's chased back up again. Obi Lai picks it up. Plays it to McCabe. Comes up to the halfway line. 
That's a bit of a slack one, you have to say, at this stage of the game. Andy, all the way across. McKee picks it up, though. Yeah, the passing has been a wee bit slack throughout the second half. Probably the players are now beginning to feel the pace of the game a wee bit and trying to try to get their second wind on it. You probably get after normality after about an hour there, you know. Nice heel from Gibson. I'd like Norton to take a wee bit more care when they're playing their app, when they're playing balls out for the back. We've yep. done it about three or four times. Return possession cheaply to the opposition. That's not always a good idea when you're running on a wee bit empty tanks at the end of the game. You want to try and keep it for as long as you can. Ah, he's ball, unlucky. Ball are judged to have gone out. And Josh McPake. Morton retreat back into defence. He's unlucky there, Jerry. He's worked hard to get the ball back and then he, the ball just rolled over for the throw in. It's Patrick, a little bit of space to get the pass away. He's played across by Robinson, eludes everybody in the centre of the box. Stabbed away from Muirhead. He's on his own though. He's going to have to wait for support. Salkill steaming down the right hand side. That's a nice pass, but Obelaya read it well, plays it back to Ferguson, but Salkill keeps the run going, pressurises the goalkeeper, he plays it out to Buchanan. Plays it inside to McCabe, he brings it forward, tries to fire it down. Uh, as Andy points out, there's a man loose out on that left hand side, but Omar is over now. Back inside, Maxwell, he was dangerous in the first half. Chance now. East takes it and fires it into the corner. Well, Morton really sliced open there, Andy. It has to be said, and that was a calm finish. Yeah, it was a, it was a very good finish. Uh, he's got turned inside the box like that on his favoured foot. Got a good finish across the goalkeeper there. But we're a bit low in numbers at that end of the park when the move was developing, Jerry. That's why I pointed across. You know, I left isolated across there. But uh, Max was a good player. Number three across there, he stepped in, made a nice one too, and allowed the, the move to develop around about him. It was a good finish. The keeper didn't really have any chance with that. Strong finish from his left hand side. Yep, Shields, superb finish into that corner, which gives us a score line of Morton 2, Queen of the South 2, which is what we had at Capelo way back in February, which seems a long time ago now. McLean plays it forward, taken down by Colbo. Chance to get away, that's a strong challenge coming in, and a free kick to Morton in yet another dangerous position, Andy. Yeah, it is. Aiden is but soft this time, so we'll get somebody new on the free kick situations, Gary. Uh, it's, in a, it's in a good area. Another five yards further forward would be even better, but it's in a good area for it to be hitting the target, and that's really what they've got to do with this ball, hit the target. Again, 25 yards out. Could be Ross Mc, yeah, Josh McPeak, I think he fancies it. With a call in attendance as well. But Josh really fancies this one, Andy. Yeah, well, it's a right footer free kick as well. You get both ends of the goal to look at. Left footer can only go one side. Almost identical position to the one that Aidan Nesbitt had not that long ago. Just curled over the bar, McPake, right footed. Goalkeeper takes it confidently. A decent just never, height. He's just never got enough pace on the ball like that, you know. He's got it on target, but the pace, with the matched up Nesbitt's pace with McPake's accuracy there at for that one, it'd been ideal. Omar does well to get the clearance away as Queen's now tried to get conference in that equaliser and then pour forward in numbers. Well, they've done that. When Morton went in the lead, they had the best of the game after that in the first half. And they've done that again. Morton went in the lead and they've had the best of the last 10 minutes, Jerry. Seemed to be a team that respond to that type of set. Into the last 10 minutes here at Capital Park in this Betfred Cup tie. It remains Morton 2, Queen of the South 2. That's a throw in down at the near side corner flag. Plenty of targets inside the box. Obelai is the target, but Morton get it headed clear and out it goes. And Queens have their fifth corner of the match. Yeah, set pieces have been very important tonight, Jerry. They've always been dangerous. They've always looked dangerous from both sides. Uh, none more so as we get into the last 10 minutes from set pieces set in there. This is a strange one. It's just about to say, yeah. Not? They're all gathered on the 18 yard line. I think they're doing the hokey cokey game. <laughs> one striker. With, now you see Shields peeling out to the back, and he is the target at the back. It's headed down. Morton have to clear this one. Southfield now tries to fire it up. Peak wants it, but it's lobbed back into the Morton box. Strap gets a head in on it, but the decision was offside anyway. Yeah, yeah. Again, the Morton have played the ball forward like that. A wee bit more composure just to get out there with the all go out together. Peter McAdams with the free kick. 
You get the feeling the next goal will be the winner, Andy? I would think so, Jerry. It's got that look off it. The can underneath it, Muir head goes in. The referee doesn't like the challenge from Big Robbie. It's a free kick. Yeah, it's hard to see what he found to find fault there, the referee. I think the two of them have went for the ball together. It's actually come off uh, the big fella's back, Big Robbie's back. So I don't know what he's seen. Maybe felt he was fouling the defender prior to the ball being played for, but I don't know. Lamar underneath it, can only head up into there, as does Jacobs, gets a second bite at it. He's headed by it, Gomar does the same, you'd head. Really hasn't got into the game since he came on, Andy. No, he's going to have to try and launch himself in between the two central defenders and give them somebody to mark and allow people to play off him a wee bit. He's a big fella as well, he should be using himself more physically. Strap will take this throw in. The short window to Colville. Back to Strap. Strap tried to play it through for Colville. Played down the channel. McPake, he's back inside the box this time again. The referee pulls it back. For, I think Hoppy was looking for a penalty at that one, Andy, but you see quite clearly that it was just outside. Yeah, he's just outside the box like that, but he's done well. When the ball's released through him, his, his first touch is to take it across his defender like that. Force him into either making the challenge or standing back off him. Uh, fortunate for Queen of the South, the challenge was made outside the box, so I think Hoppies was more than hope than anything else. He's a he shout for the penalty. However, we do have a real opportunity for Morton here, just close to the edge of the box. Some maybe 10, 15 yards off the goal line. Plenty of targets from McPeak to aim for. He fires that one high away to the side though and out it goes for a goal kick and you can see Josh McPeak reach, reaches down, he touches socks. He'll be unhappy with that one, Andy. I'll be disappointed. He'll be disappointed with the ball. He's just put too much pace on it. He fired it across the goal. You know, you've got to put it in the melting pot. Put it in the mix and allow people to come. Especially late on in the game like this, Jerry. You know, it can suck the life out of everybody when something like that happens when you're in a promising position. Just put it in. Put it in the mix and let them go and get it. Well, the play finds out to that far side as Ferguson launches it once again. McLean's underneath it, gets a header high up into there. Strap tries to knock it on. Salkill underneath it, volleys it high up. Marsh gets head to that one, knocks it back inside the Queen's half. Muir head goes up, gets the header down, but out it goes for the throw in. I think Queen's about to make another substitution down on the touchline there, Andy. You can see somebody warming up. Morton, of course, have committed three other substitutes. Robin Muirhead, Luca Colville, and Cami Salkill coming off. Salkill, the hero last week against Livingston, hasn't really had that kind of opportunity since he came on. Zogolai hits the ball all the way down to that far corner. That's almost a tactic, Andy, to force Morton to play out the throw-in from such a, a dangerous position. It is, well, we've got them further up the park than, than we've probably Morton would want like that, you know. And Morton on their side, they don't look like a side that's going to play out for the back anyway, you know, so the long throw in is a great tactic for them. We move into the last five minutes of this Betfred Cup tie here at Capelo Park. The score is Morton 2, Queen of the South 2. Sean McGinty goes in for a challenge that I think was always going to be a free kick and will there be an opportunity for Queens to make that change? It's Naya Joseph who's coming on. Yeah, and it's a lad that was fouled there. East, who's making his way off. He's actually attracted the foul there. He's came through the back and he's made more of it than what there really was. But it's got them a free kick in a very dangerous area. Yep, it's about halfway inside the Morton half, but it's very, very central position. Would you shoot from here, Andy, do you think? I would shoot for five yards <laughs> further back, Jerry. Yeah, true. That is true. There's a bit of a conference about it. Yeah. Morton have everybody back, bar Josh McPake for this one. It certainly looks as if he's about to shape, shape to shoot, as they say. Yeah, it's quite a distance. It's a long way, Jerry. But and that is the result, Andy. Yeah. High, wide, and handsome, as we used to say. Yeah, he's going to have to get a lot of power in there. That's, that's almost 30, 35 yards out like that, you know. You really need to be hitting it over the wall and into the ground to, to, to use the pace off the park, as I've said earlier on. Ronaldo wouldn't have tried that at Capo. <laughs> and really a wasted opportunity with so little of the game left to play. Well, 
walked about in the centre, Salkill tries to get a touch, tries to get the break, might get away with it one more time, Obelize underneath it, does well, the big defender gets it away to Gibson, he shows a nice touch, tries to flight it over, Omar takes it down on his chest, Jacobs tidies up, gives it to McLean, he launches it forward looking for the run of Salkill on that far side, Obelize underneath it. Well, that's a shock to me, and I'm trying to see what Don Robertson saw in that challenge by Cammy Salkild. I think he, he had a wee tug of the jersey when he was playing the ball away, Jerry. You know, I think that's what he pulled him back for like that. It was a needless foul because, he, you know, he had them over that end of the part. They would have had to have worked their way out by then. Now they get out cheap when you create a, a needless foul, soft foul. Takes a yellow card for his trouble as well. Cammy Salkild entering a crucial phase of the game here. Just under three minutes, two and a half minutes roughly left of the 90. There won't be much injury time as we talked about, Andy. As this one's fired high into the Morton half, Colwell's underneath it, gets a contract header away. Muirhead goes to chase it down. Buchanan gets the header on, knocks it far ahead. Strap takes it down, drops it inside. McAllister, now the chance, Morton to come forward. It's dropped back inside to Jacobs. Salkeld wants it. Jacobs looks as like if he's going to fire up a shot. He does, he takes a right footer. Just fires past the post, not to... The happiness, shall we say, of Robbie Muirhead and Josh McPake, who were looking to get into a position inside the box and maybe got on to the end of something, Andy. Yeah, they were looking. They with two or three players inside the box there when, when Jacobs lined up. And they thought he was going to play it in. And up until the last minute, I'm sure Jacobs thought that as well. But he's seen a gap, seen an opening, had a shot at goals. And you can't really knock the fella for doing that, you know. Once you see the white of the goals, have a shot at goals. You don't buy a raffle. If you don't buy a ticket, you'll never win the raffle, Jerry. That's the way I was going to say it. Never a truer word spoken, Andy Ritchie, as the throw-in goes to Morton down on that far side. I've been Omar to take it. And you have to say, Andy, a late goal now would be cruel on either side, perhaps. Well, probably when you looked at that way, but I'd take it, Jerry. Any day of the week, any goal's a good goal. Doesn't matter how you go about it. Maybe the players lie. have worked hard. There's no doubt about that. Put in a good 90 minutes. And I know you mentioned earlier on whether there'd be any injury time or not. I haven't seen a trainer on or a a physio on to treat any players, so that'll be substitutions only, Jerry. Well, Obelai is down on the far side of the park after that challenge from Robbie Muirhead. He's not getting up. He seems to just be staying down as the game rages on in front of him and that ball's knocked back inside the box and oversteps Buchanan to hoof it away and out it goes for a throw into Morton as we enter the last minute of the 90. Yeah, big fella looks in trouble over there. He's got up a couple of times and went back down again. Yeah, he's a big enough fella. You probably need to take a baseball bat to him to get him down, Jerry. So I've never seen him do with a baseball bat out there, but he's hurted himself. <laughs> Let me put you on the spot then, Andy. Man of the match for you. Yeah, well, they've worked hard, played well yeah, in patches of the game. But uh, for me, James McPake would have been the... Not the Josh player. McPake. Josh then, McPake, no. <laughs> Same guy, Dundee manager. I get them all mixed up. I would absolutely concur with that, Andy. I think he's had an excellent game. His energy... His, his decision making as well at times and of course he, he created that goal inadvertently for Aidan Nesbitt as well to put Morton 2-1 ahead he's, he has impressed well on his debut like that he's done very well and that always augurs well for more yeah, as I said he could be a very important player at Morton this season with the way he wants to play the game yeah, and he's, he's done he's done particularly well tonight you know I might we toss up with Wade and this bit, but McPate's probably just edged it. Well, McPate, of course, he's, he's seen the full 90, which will also delight David Hopkins, because he talked about that before the match as well. It's really, really important that his players get a real run out. Well, they've had one tonight, the ones that have played a good 90 minutes for them. Yeah, there'll be certain things he'll be, he'll be happy about. The fact that they didn't put the, yeah, the pedal down after they went to go in front will maybe be a disappointment to him, you know? Bit of a mix up there between Lewis Strap and Sean McGinty, but McLean fires it down to the side that's chased back down. Gibson not giving up. McGinty gets the header down. Jacobs has to be careful, has to nip in. Strap tries to fire it forward. Muirhead's looking to try and get underneath it and get the run going. Drops back inside. Now the chance for Queens to come forward and what could be one of the last attacks of this match. Play it out to McCabe, who gives it to Buchanan. Buchanan launches one over the top. It's headed clear by McGinty. Callis is underneath it, but it comes back. Queen's now trying to get forward. An absolutely unequivocal volley there from Sean McGinty. Clears the ball but only inside the Queen's half. The referee is checking his watch, I can tell you. 
as Queen's look to maybe get the last attack of the evening. Fitzpatrick, a good bit of space in the middle of the park there, tried to drop the short ball in it just as well. Sean McGinty was alive to that because the forward was away just behind him, his strap now. Maybe your head underneath, Buchanan does well, gets a good header in, and now the chance for Morton to launch perhaps the last attack of the night as Lewis Strap goes down to load the ammunition three quarters of the way inside. The Queen of the South half, all the big men inside the box. I can tell you that Rabino Mar and Brian McLean are the only Morton players staying back at the halfway line. Surely Lewis will just look to launch this one in, Andy. Yeah, and the second ball, we mentioned it earlier on in the game, Jerry. The second ball is vital this time. Sean McGinty's underneath it, tries to get the head out. Played back to Strap, he takes a first touch, tries to curl the ball in, it comes off the defender, and there's a chance for Brian McLean to get the header in just at the back post, and out it goes. And that could well be the end of it, Andy. Yeah, that was an opportunity. I think it might have been I think that might have been your head that tried to get his head on that, Jerry. We missed it with the pole that's in front of us here, but I think it was and it was a kind of weak effort at the end. He should have done better with the header. It was a good ball in from Lewis Strap. Clean fires it forward once again. Muir heads underneath it, tries to win the header. Ball breaks to Salkeld. Doesn't get a great first touch on it, but he chases the ball down inside the box over Lyre. Clears it away. About to say three minutes of injury time played Andy, but the referee, Don Robertson, has decided that is the end of the match. It's been a good one, an even contest, you would have to say. Both sides have no complaints about the amount of time they had on the ball or game time tonight, Andy. Yeah, it's, it's been a level game. You know, Morton started well. Queen of the South had better the, the second 20-odd minutes in the first half. And it's been the same again second half, you know. A bit more scrappy and patchy in the second half, but they shared, they shared the spoils as far as the ball went, making chances. Morton might made one or two more and better chances, but, yeah, you probably see at the end of the 90 minutes that like, a draw was a fair result, Jerry. It started with Sean McGinty in 17 minutes. Deft header past Ferguson in the Queen of the South goal, just placing it beyond the keeper's right-hand side. And then it was Dobby who got the equaliser. We didn't see that one coming, Andy, did we? And then Aidan Nesbitt put it forward once again to go 2-1 ahead. And then, of course, that chance taken well. The shield inside the box to make it two apiece. Yeah, Queens would be happy with the way they fought back. The way they fought back, you know, from losing the goals and going behind, especially away from away from home like that. You know, Alan Johnson would be pleased about that. They showed enough character and commitment to be able to do that. Morton never really capitalised after they'd went in front both times, Jerry, and that was always a problem. The momentum was returned back to Queen of the South very quickly, even though Morton had scored to get into the lead like that. So, hope you'll have a bit to see about that, I would imagine. Yeah. But, We'll go to penalty kicks now, I think, Jerry. Well, I can see David Hopkins speaking to his players, trying to decide who the main men will be for that. As all the players head out towards the halfway line. Alan Johnson, Sandy Clark, down there as well, and the issuing instructions to the players as well. Oh, they'll probably have known prior to, to, to the game starting who would be the the picked taker, you know. Uh, would you have fancied one yourself? Oh, I'd have loved it. I would have taken first. Pressure? Nah, no, it's not really pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's only pressure if you miss it, Jerry. Yeah. You, know, you try your best not to do that. Somebody once asked me what was the best way to take a penalty kick. Properly and put it in the net, and then there's no problem. You can't have any clearer answer than that. That's the way it works, I'm afraid. And it'll be Queen's to take the first of the sport kicks. This is when you really, really miss a crowd, Andy, isn't it? Yeah. And also as well, the way the referee picks to go to the goal, the wee Dublin end, that's a great big barrier right in front of us, Jerry. We'll need to move a wee bit, eh? Yes, indeed. Thanks for doing that, guys. Whoever won the toss made that decision. It will be Joe McKee. He's impressed tonight as well. I have to say he will take the first kick for Queen's. Referee Don Robertson. I'm sure he doesn't need to tell Aidan McAdams what the rules are. He prepares for this first penalty kick. Steps up, takes it right footed and just drops it nicely into the corner. One to Queen's. Yeah, I just waited. Adams moving there and then decided what area he was going to put the ball into. That was a well taken penalty kick. Kyle Jacobs it will be. 
kick, the first Morton kick. Right footed, down into the corner, confident strike from the Morton midfielder and it's now one apiece. Yeah, he had made his mind up on the way up to the ball exactly what he was going to do. Now heading down is Rhys McCabe. Take the second penalty kick for Queen's. Is it an advantage taking the first kick, Andy? Yeah, uh, well, it can be. If you score with it, Jerry, that's <laughs> what they're all about. Uh, it's nice if you can get off to a good start like that, you know. These are the situations where you either become hero or zero, eh? <laughs> Takes his time, steps up, right footed, fires it confidently well beyond Aidan McCann. That is a good penalty, Andy. Yeah, that was a pick it out penalty. Smashed it into the top left hand corner. Keeper had no chance of that. You've got to make a decision as you're a goalkeeper too, whether you're going to stand or dive. And I see a lot of goalkeepers mix it up a wee bit. They throw themselves a bit for a couple and then just stand up for a couple. Look at Colville stepping up to take this one. 2-1 to Queen's on penalties. Don't usually like left footer, but. Oh, yeah, that's a super that's strike, Andy, right into the high corner. Goalkeeper, absolutely no chance, two apiece. Now, that was a match of the previous. Yeah, picked whatever way he was going to go, committed to it, and smashed it in the top right corner this time. Ollie Gibson, veteran, second period at Queen of the South. Stepping up to show his experience, perhaps. Yeah, he played well tonight as well. Plenty of energy for a man of his age. Yeah. They get the energy left to take this kick, though. Gibson, oh, just beyond McCann, right into the centre of the goal. Good penalty. Yeah, it's one of them where you go for a couple, you die for a couple, and you stand for one, and you're liable to get lucky. A wise man once said to me about penalty kicks, you're better being lucky than good all the time. And if the big fella had maybe just chosen to stand his ground there, he would have just hit it straight in his arms, there. 3-2 to the Dunhamers. As Roy Muir's head steps up. Take his kick, he'll be taking this one left-footed, of course. And he comes, and that's a save by Ferguson. He said it about it left footer, Andy, just tried yeah. to place the kick beyond the keeper. I'm never great with left footers when it comes to that. You know, they close their body off by the way they strike the ball, you know. Yeah, but I wasn't too happy in the, the, the run up as well. You know, nice stuttering run ups. Yeah, unfortunately, he's missed it like that, you know. Corner shields, right footed. Oh, oh, fires high over the bar. And that a real break for Morton. Oh, yeah. He's put it right out of the park, I think, Jerry. You know, right up the Dublin end, right out of the park. I wasn't expecting that one there. I was expecting them maybe to step up and stick it in the corner. He looked as if in the run-up he was going to do that, but he took the wrong option and went for power and blazed it over the bar. Rabbi Omar will have to go and collect the ball. So he steps up to take the next penalty. Three two to Queens at the moment. Places the ball down. Taking it right footed. <laughs> Difficult to see what happened there, but I think the keeper punched it onto the bar. Yeah. Uh, you can tell by Rabin's body language. I thought it was just going to keep in behind the goalkeeper. Yeah, uh, it just kept it out, stuck it up onto the crossbar, and it came down behind him and stayed out. Uh, it's disappointing. It was, it was a well struck shot and a, a good save by the goalkeeper. The cannon now with a great opportunity. Right footed into the corner. Confident penalty, and that takes us away from a penalty kick situation with Queen's running out winners. Two apiece, it finished in 90 minutes. We went to penalty kicks. Just unfortunate. It's a bit of a lottery, isn't it, Andy? Well, it works out that way, but the game's got to be decided when it's like that, you know. Uh, became a lottery at the end, but especially when the game was so evenly matched, that was a, always a chance that it would go to penalty kicks like that, you know. Disappointing for Morton, but. There'll be a lot of positives that Davy Hopkins can take out in the first competitive game. Uh, and he'll be working on that. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Do you think there'll be a lot for David to take from this game? Sure there will be. He'll be able to gauge exactly what kind of shape he'll want to play and the players that he's going to be able to use. And uh, as I mentioned a couple of times early in the commentary, Jerry, it's all about game time for them. Putting game time into their legs now to get them up and ready for, for what will be an hour on the first game of the season league-wise. But... Still got a few games to play in this as well. Important games coming up to play in it, you know. Uh, especially that St Mirren game, eh? So, it ends in disappointment for Morton this evening, losing 4-2 on penalty kicks after what you would have to say was a decent workout for the home side. Next up for Morton is Queen's Park at Capelo Park 
uh, next Tuesday night. I hope you enjoyed what you watched this evening. It's been certainly entertaining in places, and we'll look forward to having your company next week as well for the Queen's Park game. From Andy Ritchie and myself, Jeremy Dade, it's good night from Capital Park.